we're on. Um, no, I'm, I'm never, and I don't uh, make it a point, I, sharing that many times like I did this week uh, kind of drained me. Once I, I mean, I'm, I, I told the guys Thursday or I told the guys last night, I can't remember, that when, man, all I know to do is give what I've been given. You know, say it's someone, somebody cooks, when, the, when I get a fresh loaf of bread from the Lord, I just want to slice it up and give it out. So it's, it's the same bread, though, every time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and oh uh, Lord, I don't want to keep going the same track on Sunday morning. You know, some of you guys know me, and and uh, and if you, Chip's heard it several times already. <laughs> and I'm sorry, Craig. He told me not to. Uh, you know, don't apologize for things like this. But uh, um, I am passionate about the Lord, and and uh, so this morning I got up. I got up really really early. Set my alarm. Got in late. Got to bed late. Got up really, really early to just go, Lord, I want to, you know, let me give something and let it not be down the same old road. And, and, uh, and so um, as I was kind of reading through my journals and I, I got to a point where um, I'm reading in the Bible and reading in my journals going, Lord, and, and I, I saw a word someone had given to me once. And when we started our Wednesday night uh, deal for men in Natural Dam, and it's every week that's kind of started on for men who have something they can't overcome in their life you know and then it may be something real obvious it is hey you just want to really be extra committed or you just want to go around a group of men that are we're not it's maybe it's a little different from a life group we're just diving right in and just getting serious um and but also dealing with some guys who have some real issues you know and 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 my boss and i rick mooney are doing it together and he's kind of the one that led the charge, and I felt like I was supposed to join him. But I said, man, Rick, I said, you and I, are, we're just not really qualified outside the Lord. I said, I just saw Rick is like, he'd stretch your staff over the sea, and if God doesn't part it, it ain't going to happen. And I, said, I, and I said, I'm just going to put my rock in the sling and just sling it. And if God don't make it connect, it's just not going to work. And, uh, and then that Sunday... I, w I was here at church, and, and someone came up to me, and, and they read that out of uh, um, Samuel, where David picked up the stone, and she said, you just put your stone in the sling and sling it, and God's going to take the head off the enemy. So that's pretty cool. So Monday morning, I, that same Monday morning, I was meeting Craig for early at Starbucks in Van Buren. I can't at the time remember what we were meeting about, but while I was waiting on him, I get there early. I'm usually early. Um... I thought, well, I'll just read something constructive, spiritually. And uh, I flipped through my phone to my Kindle app, and, and, I, and I pulled up an old book I'd bought years ago from Angus, uh, Living a Mighty Faith. It's just a daily devotional, you know. And I said, okay, what's the date? Because I hadn't read it in months. Found the date, and it was all about Goliath and David taking Goliath out with a stone. I said, okay, Lord, there's three confirmations, me and then the Word and then that right there. So as I read that this morning, I thought, well, Lord, you know, your word is powerful. And sometimes we just need, some of us just need a stone at the moment that we can pick up and knock the head off the enemy. And so this morning as we're, you know, we try to meet every time us elders before we speak and we pray for one another. And, and Craig said, man, guys, I've got a drum and I've got a change and I've got to be the sound guy. So Stan, you pray for Daryl. And, and Stan prayed and he prayed um, Isaiah 55 that... Uh, um, that the word of the Lord, let me just read it right quick and then we'll get started. And we all know this, God speaking. So this is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. So we know that and we speak it and we believe it. So this morning, I'm just going to take off. I'm going to read some things that I've got highlighted in the Word, some things that spoke to me and just believe that maybe if you're in a moment where you're just needing a Word, that one of these are going to land, you know. So this morning I picked up a pocket full of rocks, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so uh, we'll just, we'll start out. Um, but we'll start with, uh, well, we'll start because we know the story with David, and uh, everybody knows that story. I won't go into too much detail. But the thing about it, was the, the unique things about it was David, uh, you know, we know he was a man of God through what God began to show him as he shows us things smaller, little things like bears and lions stealing lambs. Those are little things. <laughs> David goes and smites him, struck him down, kills him. 
when they take a and, and through his knowledge and already the Lord preparing him and then uh, through the sovereignty of the Lord he sends him to the uh, Jesse sends him to the army to check on his brothers there's Goliath down there David goes who's this uncircumcised Philistine mocking the armies of God we all know the story and you know we all know that one thing about it that's unique is 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 David already kind of had his preparation and training but man tried to put other stuff on him okay well if you're going to do this this is what you're going to need and so Saul dressed David in his armor and sometimes for us people try to dress us in their armor but God's already been working with you and dealing with you how you're to how you're to work with the Lord you know and that's the way that's what you're familiar with you know I've, I've done a little bit of running in races and and I don't follow any of the rules, but Kobe Morgan is always like, Daryl, Daryl, you've got to train and prepare yourself. And whatever you've been training with every, you know, weekly as you're running, that's what you want to do on race day. You don't want to introduce your body to a bunch of new supplements and stuff. But I, I'm just of the belief that what I lack in training, I make up with all these new supplements at the races. You know, I try to just, I look like a bandolera. I've got juice and chills and blocks, and <laughs> you know, but uh but no, just uh, that what you've been training, what, what God has been working with you personally is how he's going to continue most of the time. And so David said, listen, I can't wear these things. And so David just walks down. He was confident in his God. And we know he picked up five smooth stones from the brook and he walked out to the arm and he walked out and faced Goliath. And he said, you come to me with sword and javelin and I come to you basically with all the, with the God of Israel at my back and with the word of God. And to this day, I'll strike you down, cut your head off, and we'll defeat the Philistines. Basically what he said. And, uh, and so today, um, we're just going to read some of the Word of God. Just nuggets. Um, and so, Craig had this one for me a while back, and I think he gave it to others. And this is out of uh, Exodus 14, 13. And so, for some people, wherever you're at today, sometimes you just, there's some, sometimes I've gone places and I'm praying about something, and that was what I needed. And, uh, but Moses said, Moses answered the people and said, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. And these are things that we've got to, guys, well, we've got to dig into the word and, men, and, and as you just read through the Word of God and you start a habit of reading through the Word of God, God will make these things alive to you. And when He makes them alive to you, you highlight them and then you own it. It becomes a stone in your pouch, okay? To know that the God will fight for me. One time when we were dealing with a lot of religious issues and kind of my, what my wife and I came out of, and a lot of legalism, and they, some people were going to come up here and, and visit us, and, and I knew what some of the discussions were coming up, and I remember one time I was like, they're coming up here, and by golly, I'm going to have the Bible out, and I'm, we're just going to, I'm going to, we're just going to get right to it. I'm sick and tired of this, me, 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 and I shared that in our way back then small group, and Burt Calhoun looked at me and said, you're not going to say a word, young man. I was young then. He said, your God is going to fight for you. And he did. Now, all that weekend went on, and the last day before they left, um, someone came up to me and said, the Lord has shown me that I have built a wall between me and you, Daryl. And the Holy Spirit convicted me, so I want to apologize for that. And it just, the Lord, I didn't have to say a word. The Lord did the fighting. So the Lord will fight for you. He's on your side. Okay, numbers. So this is just going to be different stones. Some of them are square, some of them are round, some of them are smooth, some of them are rough. This is his numbers. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Of course, we know the answer to that. When God speaks, he acts. And when he makes a promise, he will fulfill it. He will fulfill it. Man, I could wear the one out. I'll just skip it. When they anointed David, God made that promise and anointed David. When he called, Samuel called him forth and poured the oil on him, there was, it was settled. It was settled. In heaven and in hell, David 
would one day sit on the throne regardless of everything that came against him because what God said would happen. Whatever God has said to you and given you a promise will happen. Stand upon it. Your God will fight for you. He will keep his promise. He is a faithful God. Maybe somebody needs to hear <laughs> Gideon, chapter 6 of Judges, verse 12. The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, who felt the weakest of his clan. He was threshing wheat, hiding from the Amalekites. I think that's who it was. And the angel of the Lord appeared and said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And then Gideon goes in, well, I'm the weakest, and I'm the, and he just ignored all that. Go in the strength that you have. Verse 14, go in the street that you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. The Midianites. The Lord answered, I will be with you and will strike down all the Midianites together. Sometimes as we're reading the word of God and we're facing a challenge or whatever we're facing, the Lord will appear to us. The Lord will kind of speak to our heart and go, you just step forth. My calling you qualified you. The moment the angel said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. That immediately made him a mighty warrior, and God was with him. Regardless of what he felt, all he had to do was step out. Now, we know that Gideon had to test the Lord and prove him true, and he used the fleece and all that kind of stuff, and the Lord was good to him, and the Lord confirmed it. And, uh, but there's sometimes, God, and we're just, we're just spending time with the Lord, and we're facing a lot of things. We don't know what's going on. We just feel like the Lord said, stand up, speak my word, declare, and uh, your God will fight for you. So for me, this was huge. We're going to go all the way into Psalms 32. So one time in 2000, summer of 2002, Craig had told me, he said, Daryl, why don't you read this psalm all the way through these several psalms and then read this one. And the Lord spoke to me through this, and maybe he'll speak to you. Psalms 32, 8. I, this is the Lord speaking, I will instruct you. I'm reading now the NIV. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like the horse or mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled or by bit and bridle, or they, not, they will not come to you. The Lord will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. Now, the thing about it is there for me, if you're a child of God, he will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. You're safe in his hands. But if he has to, he'll use a bit and bridle to get your attention. And listen, God has everything out there he can use as a bit and bridle. And sometimes that's pain and sometimes that's sickness because it turns us back to God. Sometimes we're just plugging along and then God gets our attention. Thank you, Lord. And we thank him for those things, you know, because he's, he's faithful and he's committed to us. Your God will fight for you. He's faithful to you. He will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. The way I see it is through the years, I do a lot of reading, and sometimes I don't read about certain people. I'll hear them for a while, and all of a sudden God brings them into my life. You guys know if you've heard me in the last few months that kind of Tim Keller, I've been reading some of Tim Keller's stuff. Now, my son-in-law and my daughter have read a lot of him, but it was just like timely for me that God brought this. And I think that's the way he does in my life. He just brings different ones along at different times to speak different things into my life. So, the Lord will instruct you. Man, our God is faithful. But there's also Psalms 34, 33, 19. 34, 19. A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. I had many troubles this past year if you guys heard me speak on my construction building that's what i do for a living so whatever i do for a living the lord uses that to teach us and he sets up things he orchestrates trials and tribulations in your life no matter how good you try to get all the bases covered he's just going to do it so that it, so the bible tells us so that our faith will be proved genuine right it's more precious than gold that perishes but so that when he comes back our faith will prove genuine because when you get old as i am you can kind of look back in life and see all the trials and tribulations and temptations and struggles you had and you see where god is faithful in each one of them 
So the older we get, we ought to be able to go, even though I can't see in the future. I know those things await me. Paul said, I know that in every city, trials and tribulations await me. But I just look back in the past and see the faithful hand of God. And the cool thing about God, he weaves our mistakes into his story. Go figure. And if you wonder about that, just read a little more about Bathsheba and Perez and Tamar, who's in the lineage of Jesus. The despicable things that God wove into his plan. He can fix your mess. That's what he's in the business of. Man, I remember a guy one time when I was just bemoaning all of my struggles and my just weakness. He goes, be a trophy of his grace where he can just shine you before the enemy and go, you think you had that one and all of their mess? But when I speak, I qualify him. All right. So this one's one, this is when you're speaking sometimes. So this is what happened one of the first Sundays I started regularly teaching here. I'm back there because I've been going to church here for 28 years, 28 and a half years, almost 28 and a half. And I was all nervous as I'll get out to share. I can go share with a bunch of people I don't know. It's okay. I can share at the barn with all those men, and I know those guys. Them old roughnecks and all them guys, I can handle that crowd. But I'd come here, I'd go. It's all these people that seen me for year after year sit right there, and I just, I just defeated me. Certain people could walk in, and my legs were gone. Noni walked up to me and said, Daryl, i got a word for you. It's out of Psalms 81.10, second half. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it, says the Lord. So I said, okay. And I'll, I'll say this. Dwayne Russell was going to church here at the time, and Tim Knight, Walked back there and prayed for him. Man, I was all nervous. Tim touched me, prayed, and something. Listen, guys, y'all say I'm mystical or weird. Something felt like it fell out of my side. And, and it just calmed and poof, just settled over me. Open your mouth wide and he will feel it. Sometimes when you're in public. So a guy challenged me one time on a job site. And he had been watching the History Channel. We were on a job site. We were in a big kitchen area, and, and I'm... It's a big construction site, and there's guys standing around everywhere. And this guy, he's just trying to get a rise out of me because they kind of knew where I stood, and they know I'm a Christian. And, and uh, he goes, what do you do with the parts of the Bible that are missing? And I said, what are you talking about? And he goes, I watched the History Channel last night, and there's some parts of the Bible that are missing. Of course, at that time, you kind of just sitting here going, how on earth am I going to answer this? <laughs> and I kind of look around, and you see a few guys that are working go, <laughs> and you're like, Lord, help me, because I don't know what to do here. Man, I'm not an apologist guy, theologian. So open my mouth. <laughs> and I wish I could articulate it as well as I did that day. But it's something I said to something to the staff and going, the parts of the Bible that are missing. See, I believe that God always has been and always will be. And that God that knew everything way, way, way back there do exactly what I needed for today. So I don't have to worry about what I don't have. I just have to worry about what I do have. I can be faithful. He gave me what I needed today, and I don't have to worry about what is not there. And I was like, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> I opened my mouth wide, and he filled it. <laughs> awesome. So sometimes you just need to open your mouth. Let God fill it. Step out in faith, and God will pour forth. You know, it's sometimes it's in the stepping. That's what Angus, one of my heroes, mentors, tells. He says, you're not going to see anything until you step out there. And when you step, God will meet you right there. You just pitch up your little bitty words. He drives them home. You know, I told you all the time that uh, I'm getting ready for the barn meeting, and I'm not focused on anything but sweeping. Aggravated that the shop is such a mess. And, and a guy comes in, picking up a piece of equipment out there. What you doing? I said, well, I'm sweeping up for a barn meeting. Men's meeting. That's good, all of us men getting together. He's not a Christian. I said, what kind of meeting? I said, well, it's a, it's a Christian. And I'm sitting there for, no, what kind of meeting? So, burp, stop. There you have two ways you can go. You can just kind of blow him off and get him on the screen on the way. Or you can step out there. <laughs> <laughs> Open my mouth. And, uh, but my words didn't, I just couldn't pull all my words together. 
They just didn't, they just were kind of jumbled up. But God already knew that, see? So God had already prepared him when he came in. God had already, y'all heard me say it before, he already made the hole in his heart fit Daryl's words. And when I just pitched the words out there, God took them and put them right in there. And I invited him later thinking, i am invited so many guys that don't come. So the Lord did this for me because he didn't come back after. He came that night. He walked in there. He sat down and listened. And later, I'm standing here talking to someone, and I hear him over there pointing back at me going, that man helped me. He helped me today. And I went, them, them words I said? And I felt like the Lord show me, Daryl, quit trying to put it all together. You just open your mouth. I'll make it. See, I already prepared him there. I'll make that your words fit. <laughs> I'm God. Open your mouth wide. God will fill it. Oh, this is one of my favorites. When you're struggling with yourself, because I told you we're jumping around. We're using stones. But we're taking the head off the enemy. So Psalms 103, verse 8. This is NIV. If you want to, just listen. You can write it down and look it up later. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows, this is so awesome, he knows how we are formed and he remembers that we are but dust. Man, our God knows. He knows how we're formed. He knows we're just dust. He's compassionate and gracious. Give that to the enemy when he's pointing out your weaknesses. Here's another good one. This doesn't mean a lot to me. This is Psalm 119, 49. Some of you that had a word from the Lord and you've been standing on it forever like Abraham. This is a psalmist reminding the Lord. Remember your word to your servant, for you have given me hope. The Lord wants us to remind him. Lord, I know you gave me a promise with my kids. I know you gave me a word for my kids. I know you gave me a word for this situation. Remember your word. He wants us to remember his word. He wants us to, he hasn't forgotten. <laughs> But he wants us to remind him. Your promise preserves my life. I believe this. This is Psalm 139, 16. Second half. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Listen, the devil's not going to take me out. Until God says his time's up. It says in Acts, when David accomplished all the purposes of God, all the purposes of God in his generation, he fell asleep. <laughs> Your time's up, David. When Daryl accomplishes the purposes of God in my time, I'll go to sleep. Nobody's going to take me out early. I stand on that and believe it. You say, well, I, man, I got people that argue with me, trust me. Well, you just leave your doors unlocked at night and drive, you just walk out in the street without looking? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, God's giving me, I'm, but uh, hey, I'll just do the best I can and let God handle the rest, you know? Okay, for some people that I, some circles that I, I'm aware of, and I'm probably going to take this a little bit out of context, but I think it's still applicable. This is in Isaiah 8, 12. Do not call conspiracy everything these people call conspiracy. And do not dread it. Now, that's what the NIV says. The Lord Almighty is the one you are to regard 
13, 8, 13, the Lord Almighty is the one you are to guard as holy. He is the one you are to fear. He is the one you are to dread, and he will be a sanctuary. Because there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of conspiracy talk today. Everything's conspiracy. I know of circles that everything is conspiracy. That our whole government is set out to destroy all of us people. And I, well, maybe, I don't know. I said, probably, I said, the thing about it is, there, there, there is a dark, evil demon lord who's trying to take over the earth. Has been for a long time. And, and he's going to try and try and try and end up, at the end of it, he's going to see that everything that he did accomplished the purposes of God. Isaiah 9, verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And those living in the land of the shadow of death, light has dawned. Verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. See, God remembered that we're but dust and we're but clay. And he had a plan all along. That there was coming a baby. I told the men last night when the angel appeared to the shepherd and said, I bring you good tidings of great joy that will be for all men. <laughs> Guys, learn the word of God, learn his promises. This has been a boon and a help for me, and I hope it's for some, because this, for, I'm telling you, for this right here, this next verse is for somebody. This is Isaiah 30, 15. This is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. In repentance and rest is your salvation, and in quietness and trust is your strength. And it goes on down if you read it. They said, no, we're going to play. No, we're not going to listen to that. We got a plan. We got a safe place we can go to. We're going we're gonna to get away on fast horses. God says in repentance and rest is your salvation and quietness and trust is your strength because your God will fight for you. Some of you may be facing overwhelming situations. Your God will fight for you. You don't have to make a plan. You don't have to come up with schemes and ways. Now, the Lord may give you something. He may tell you to open your mouth. He may give you an idea. But in repentance and turning, just turn back to the Lord and rest in him. And quietness and trust is your strength. Y'all have heard me read this before and even uh, um, our, uh, our missionary to Israel. Rick Ridings read this. But I saw it years ago, and man, I took it, and I, I, boy, it was a fresh baked bread one morning, and I gave it away and gave it away and gave it away. Isaiah, for you guys that have kids, you're struggling with kids, Isaiah 49, 24. Can plunder be taken from warriors? Are the captives rescued from the fierce? But this is what the Lord our God says. Yes, captives will be taken from warriors and plunder retrieved from the fierce, I will contend with those who contend with you and your children. I will save. Amen. Amen. Your God will fight for you. So sometimes dealing with, with, with all of the false words the false prophecies the false blah 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 out there and all the heresies going on and you think we this is the word for me i don't have to worry about it and i in in jeremiah um 23 28 let the prophet who has his dream tell his dream but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully for what has straw to do with grain what has straw to do with wheat? What is chaff to do with wheat? Let them spew, let them sling, let them say, let them say whatever they want. But when we speak the word of God, it's real and it's grain. Let them say what they want. Is not my word like a fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? If you've got the word of the Lord, that's all you need. No matter how flashy it sounds out there, no matter how belittling they do you or make you feel, you just speak the word of the Lord. He'll bring it true in time. He pro he'll prove it true. See, when he gave the dream to Joseph, we all know that story. I'll speak on it a bunch. Joseph didn't have to prove anything. All he had to do was just continue in the life that God sent him down. You know, God gave him some pretty phenomenal dreams. You're going to be ruler 
over your brothers. And I said before the men, his brothers went, you think you're going to be ruler over us? We're going to sell you as a slave. And it was a very selling as a slave that made him into who he was. That's why in the end of it, every, every government, enemy of God, every demon, and the devil himself will realize that everything he did accomplished the purposes of God. I totally believe it. There's no, God is in control of everything, always, all time. The word of the Lord will prove you true. That's what it said about Joseph. He just waited. His thing was to be faithful in each fear he found him in. When, it, when, it was, when his brothers turned against him, there was nothing he could do. When he was sold as a slave, well, he found himself as a slave in Potiphar's house. What did he do? He was faithful. We be faithful in whatever God has called us to. And then, even worse than that, in the sovereign plan of God, he was going to be sent to the dungeon in prison. He just became faithful there. But all he had to do, he just remains faithful in that sphere until the word of the Lord proved him true. Because what God spoke, remember your word to your servant. You give me hope. We read, for what God spoke, there was coming a day when it was going to happen. And there was nothing any, any demon in hell could stop it. David was going to ascend the throne, and Joseph was going to rise in power. God had already spoken. If God has given you a word, it will come to pass if we do not give up, if we do not lose hope. Two more. I love this one. Or Jim, this is in uh, the title in my, it's Mark chapter 5. The title of my Bible says, A Dead Girl and a Sick Woman. We all know the story. Jim Simbel, I listened to him one time. He said, when Jesus was 18, two things happened. And I spoke on that one time in here going, the Bible don't say anything about when Jesus was 18. A woman started bleeding, and Jairus' wife got pregnant when Jesus was about 18. And it was going to come to play in his life. We know the story. Jairus comes up, falls at Jesus' feet, said, come play for my daughter. She's sick. Jesus said, I'll go on the way. The woman with the issue of blood, been bleeding for 12 years. We all know the story. She touches his garment, and she's instantly healed. We all know that. Many messages out of that. The thing that I love is, while Jesus was still speaking, some men from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler, said, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? But Jesus, ignoring what they said, told the ruler, do not be afraid, just believe. I don't care if it looks like death and what, God, what has been happening to you or spoke over to you. Do not be afraid. Just believe. God will bring about what he has promised. Your God will fight for you. I'm starting to use that and didn't realize it just sounds good every time. <laughs> I don't have that in my notes. Listen. I've always highlighted this in all my Bibles. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Jesus speaking. Do not be afraid, little flock. Your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. See, way back in there in the book of Daniel, it says, oh, there's coming a day, and I've talked about it before, when the Ancient of Days takes his seat. The Ancient of Days will take... It's, it's going to come a day... When the Ancient of Days will sit on the throne and the books are open and he's going to render all accounts settled. And then it says, but the kingdom will be turned over to the saints forever and ever. That's us. That's what's coming. Years ago, in prayer, I, uh, this is the last thing I share and then we'll, we'll, we'll stop. I was, uh, I was praying one morning. And a, wor and a word fell in my head. I don't know how to explain it. That's happened many times. But this time was, and it, here's what it was. I wouldn't even think about anything. One little word shall fail him. One, one little word shall fail him. One, one little word shall fail him. Where did that come from? So I got online and said, where is that in the Bible? That ain't in the Bible. 
it's in a line of, of, uh, of Luther's hymn, one of Luther's hymns, Martin Luther's hymns. And the, and the part of the line, a mighty fortress is our God. And the part of the song that it's in, the prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can't endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fail him. One little simple proclamation defeats Satan. And the simple verdict is liar, liar. All of these things we read this morning are truth. He is a liar. Satan is a liar and the father of lies. From the beginning, Satan has twisted and contorted the word of God, the truth of God into a lie. Satan's favorite lie has to been de to declare unclean what God has made clean. Guilty for those who sin, God covered. Satan wants nothing more than to eat away at your faith in Jesus and forget who you are in Christ. Perfect forever, Hebrews 10, 14. Clean out of uh, Colossians, without spot, without blemish, and free from accusation. All of his accusations, guilty, condemned, unrighteous, are all lies before Christ. Luther, he said, I admit I deserve death and hell. Devil, what of it? For I know one who suffered and made satisfaction on my behalf. His name is Jesus Christ. It is finished, paid in full. By one sacrifice you made perfect forever, forever in the sight of God. Those who are being made holy. You've got to get that difference down. You're going to get dirty some days and you're going to mess up. Come boldly to the throne of grace to receive help in time of need. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just forgive us of our sins. That's a daily process. But forever, by one sacrifice, he made you holy in the sight of God. Walk in that and don't listen to the lies. Jesus made you holy in his sight. He's in a process of making you now into that image. But before God and before the devil, you are clean pure, justified. Our God will, has, and will fight for us. Paul said at the end of his life, I've said this every time I spoke this week, I have fought the good fight of faith. No matter what I was against, every dungeon, every whipping, every beating, imprisonment, dangers and floating the sea i kept my eyes on jesus and therefore there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness that is for each one of us if we just don't give up believing we read some pretty awesome promises this morning our god will fight for us and when our time is up we'll fall asleep and if we stay on the path of faith, everything's going to come in our faith. The enemy's going to come. Trials and temptations and tribulations are going to come to test our faith. God's orchestrated that. Going, son, daughter, always remember, if it's coming at you, I let it. <laughs> I want, I'm giving you a little test. Look to me. Look to me. I will get you through it. Oh, there's coming a day when you'll look back and go, thank you, Father, for all of those tests. You made me into who I was. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, I pray that, uh, Lord, we, the people of God of 2023, of this time, this age, this, this, th that we live in now, Lord. Lord, we know from stories we read and from this book that we've been reading out of this morning that you had your people throughout every generation, in every country, in every culture, in every race. And God, you, and, and you had your faithful people. Lord, we want to be a part of the faithful. Lord, who do not lose faith. 
who do not give up hope. Our God will fight for us. What you begin in us, Lord, you will complete and finish. We are so valuable, so valuable that you came and purchased us so that we might be with you forever and ever and ever, a people belonging to God forever. Help us, Lord, to be strong, full of hope, full of faith. In this time that we live in, to be faithful, Lord, let us each one accomplish the purposes for which you sent us. And when our time is up, we'll fall asleep and receive the crown that's laid up for us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen.